We have here the 32-bit register that I designed in the previous video. It connects up to three buses and we can either read out onto bus A or bus B. Uh, we can read out to both at the same time or neither. We can also write through from bus C if we get a rising edge on the clock here. RISC-V typically has 32 of these, so we need some way to combine 32 of these cards together and select which ones should be written to and read from. Looking back to the RISC-V instruction set manual, we can see here that for the register to register operations, uh, specifically the arithmetic operations, we have RS2, RS1 and RD as the source and destination registers. They're specified using 5-bit numbers. So bits 20 to 24 are RS2 and so on. So with 5 bits, we can represent up to 32 different registers. And this is how we indicate which register we want to read from for RS1 and RS2 and which register we want to write to. So we need some way to decode these 5-bit values. The simplest way to decode our 5-bit value is to use an AND gate, or a NAND gate as I have here. Because this is a NAND, it means active low. So the 1 at the output here means we are currently not active. Let's say, for example, that we wanted to activate the 5th register. Then we would put the number 5, which in binary is 101, as the input from our RS1, say. We would then want the output to drop to a low value to activate that register. To achieve that, we can simply put inverters in where we have zeros. And you can see now that with the pattern of 00101, or the number five coming through, then we are active. Any other combination will deactivate the output, will set it to be high. So this circuit can be used to activate on a five coming in. We of course need one of these for each of our 32 registers. I of course don't have to build my own decoder. I can use just an off-the-shelf chip. In this case, I'm going to use a 74LS139. Now this contains two decoders. And if we look down at the circuit diagram here, we can see that we have two decoders. They take as an A0 and an A1 as the input and decode it to activate one of four outputs. Now I said that I need 32 of these. However, I'm not going to be able to fit 32 registers in my register file when I first build it, that will be something I'll come back to later. So for now, I'm just going to decode four registers. Uh, and in fact, one of those will be the zero register. So I'm really only going to be using three of these outputs. I will need three decoders though, one to decode the RS1 value, one for the RS2 and one for the RD. I've prepared the register file schematic here in KiCad. And if I zoom in to the address decoding section here, I have the three decoders here, one for enabling the output to the A bus, one for enabling the output to the B bus, and one for enabling the write into each of the registers. So you can see here that I'm decoding the first two bits out of our five bits, and that's all I need to be able to say, am I addressing register zero, one, two, or three? Since I'm only using the two low order bits of our five bit register address, I have to deal with the other three higher order bits. Whenever there's zeros, then I assume that I'm addressing one of these first four registers that are going to be on my register file. When they're not zero, it means it's addressing one of the other registers that currently doesn't exist. Hopefully I'll build an extension to this at, at a later point and have all 32 registers, but for now we've only got the four. So I need to disable the first four registers if those three higher order bits are not all zero. And I've done that here with NOR gates. Now, the reason I'm using NOR gates is simply because I was struggling to find any three input OR gates that were readily available. NOR gates followed by inverters will do the trick though. So when all three bits are zero, then the OR gate will output a zero and these chips are active low. So that means when we're addressing register zero, one, two, or three, the appropriate register will be enabled either for reading or writing. If we scroll over to where I've actually got the register slots, each of these three sub pages here, register one, register two, and register three, they are referring to a card edge connector that I'll be able to slot my register into. The clock for these is connected up to the right enable. This is designed so that on the falling edge of the global clock, if the right enable flag is set for the particular register, and our instruction is telling us that we want to write, and that's what this write RD signal is here. When all three of those are low, then we will generate a low signal into the clock input. 
and that falling edge down to the low signal will write the value into the register. This way I can read from registers in the first half of our clock cycle and write to the register in the second half. It's not the most efficient way, but for a slow chip like this on a single cycle data path, which is what I'm building here, it's the safest way to do it. The last thing to note here is that I've only got three registers, registers one, two, and three, but of course I also need to deal with register zero. Register zero is a read-only register that always has the value zero. And I've achieved that here simply with a whole set of pull-down resistors. All of these resistors are connected to the A and B buses and they pull down to ground. So when I don't have any of the registers active for reading, the output will be pulled low. And that means that if register zero is being read from, we will get a zero output to either the A or B bus, whichever one's being read to. And of course, I've gone ahead and prepared this as a PCB. You can see that I've got card edge connectors on both the top and bottom here, and that's so that I can connect this up to the rest of the CPU to allow the CPU to read and write registers, but I can also extend this to add in those other registers later on. Before I go ahead and send this to the manufacturer for producing the PCBs, I want to test that it's going to work. And so the next step that I want to take is to replicate the logic of this PCB in Verilog. And I'll combine that then with what I've done before in testing the add sub module and make sure that they all work as expected. Each register will use a 748C574 D flip-flop. These are octal D flip-flops, so they have eight bits in each, and I'll use four for the 32 bits in each register. If we scroll down to the functional diagram, you'll see that we have our eight D inputs. We also have tri-state outputs, which I'm not going to be using, but I will model that as well, just to make sure that I've wired everything up correctly. And otherwise it behaves as a fairly standard D flip-flop. So this should be pretty straightforward to develop in Verilog. So I've implemented all of the IO of the chip, seven bits for D, seven bits for Q, the output enable and the clock input. To store the eight bits, we'll need a register. And the output will either be the value stored in that register or high impedance, depending on the value of output enable. So if output enable is high, that means our chip is not active because it is active low. If our output enable flag is low, then we want to output the value from our register. The last thing we need to do is implement the write logic on the rising edge of the clock. And that's the logic for our D flip-flop. Each register will also use a 74HC245, and this is used to either enable or disable the register's output to the A and B bus. So I'll go ahead and put the IO in here, and I'll be trying to implement this according to the logic diagram. And so the set of buffers for A and the set of buffers for B they need wires to feed in from the two AND gates at the top. And the wires are connected out to each of the buffers to enable them. And I'm just implementing the logic here as literally as I can from that schematic. And that's the buffer implemented. So now I need to use the buffers and use the flip-flops inside of the register file. Uh, sorry, inside of the register. So the register I'll be implementing based on the keycad design. Keycad design is pretty simple. We basically have the set of D flip-flops at the top, giving us our 32 bits of memory with Q as the output, and bus C is feeding in as the input. So bus C is being used to is being used as the write data. And then down below we have eight buffer chips, four for the A bus and four for the B bus. The input signals for this are coming from the card edge connector, so I'll set those up first. I then need a bus to connect all of those Q outputs through to the buffers. And then I just need to wire up four of the D flip-flops through to the eight buffers. I'm going to do this in a bit of a lazy way. Um, I could make this a bit neater, but for the sake of readability, I'm actually going to spell these out one by one. So I'll add an instance of the D flip-flop. We'll just call it unit one, and this matches the naming convention that was in KiCad. And I'll wire up the first seven bits of our C and Q. I then need three more of these, and they will wire up the remaining 24 bits. 
And I know the copy and paste job is a bit ugly, uh, but I do like the fact that I can clearly read each of these. It's easier to read than if I put this in a for loop to generate each of the modules. So I'm going to do the same for the others. So if uh, copying and pasting offends you, please look away. So I have all of those wired up. It matches the schematic in KiCad and now I can move on to the register file. The final component that I need to implement before I can finish the register file is the 74LS139 decoder. The easiest way to implement this is simply to implement the logic shown in this truth table. I can implement that logic in a single assigned statement. This may seem like a strange way to implement things, but it does mean that I'll end up with a single piece of logic that directly implements the truth table. So I know that I'm modeling the logic correctly. Finally, we can implement the register file using all of these components. The register file will have enable inputs that come in from the card edge connector that connects it up to the rest of the CPU. And notice that I suffix any input with underscore n when it's an active low signal. I'll also need a connection for all of the clock wires. These are the signals that I generate and feed into each of the registers to indicate that I want to write. I'll need three decoders and I'll create them as an array of decoders. This first line is the enable bit that goes to the decoder, but because there are three, I can pass in three and Verilog will know to assign each of these in order to one of the three decoders. So this way decoder three will be the A decoder, decoder two will be the B decoder and decoder one will be for the write enable. Similarly, I'm sending in three values for the decoders select input and I'm just selecting the low order two bits from each of RS1, RS2 and RD, which of course are five bits each. Remember that the other three bits, the higher order three bits of these will all have to be zero and they'll be passed through the OR gates. And we finish with the output enables. Let's just throw in some comments around the code so far so that I don't get lost. Now let's create the registers themselves. Again, we'll create this as an array of three registers, register one, two, and three, remembering that register zero is always zero and doesn't require an actual register card. I'll connect up the right clocks and I'll generate these uh, in, a, in a moment, but these will be the clocks that are generated from the various internal signals. And let me just fix up a few of the errors there. And now I'll go on and implement the logic. I'll start with the logic that enables the decoders and that I'll just use OR gates. I won't bother with NOR followed by NOT. And this syntax here where I have the OR symbol or the pipe before the variable name, in this case RS1, just means that we take all of the bits in RS1 and OR them together. Next, I'll implement the write enable clocks. Again, I could probably implement this in a more clever way so that I don't repeat lines of code that are almost exactly the same. But since I'm only dealing with three of them here, I find it easier to read and understand the code if they're all spelled out. Now the last thing that I'll do is simulate the pull down resistors, which will give me the default of zero output when none of these registers are being read from. And I'll just do that by checking if the output enable flag is set. If it is set, as in low, then I'll output zeros, otherwise I'll output high impedance. And that's the end of the module. So now I've built the register file, I've got all of the components necessary and the wiring and the register cards virtually inserted into the register file. To test the register file module, I'll load it onto an FPGA as I did previously when I wrote Verilog test cases. Okay, we can see that bus C, which is the input to the register file, is the other bits over on the right. And if I want to program a value in, remembering I can't program into register zero, uh, let's program into register one. So I'll set that to a one and I can set whatever value I want here. We'll set A and three. So it should be programming three A into register one. Now I can flick the right enable flag, remembering that it's active low, and that should have now programmed into register one. I can read that out onto bus A, 
And there we go, we see our 3A. And bus B, I could read it out to there as well. Let's program bus 2, and we'll set that to be some other random combination here. And let's write that out. I'll read that, and apparently I put in 5, 2. So that looks like it's working. We can write to register 1, register 2, we can read to bus A and B. For completeness, I should check that I can write something into bus 3. And let's read bus 3 out onto A. And that appears to have worked as well. Fantastic. So that proves that the logic that I've defined works. Gives me a little bit of confidence that my design is going to work. And so I'll send off to get the PCBs manufactured and uh, develop this in hardware.